Hey, welcome to my devlog. I'm Dustin, and I'm working on a 3D game about shifting between different realities to complete objectives and obtain power. Let's take a look at what I've accomplished since the last update. First, I started outlining the combat system. To help with development, I created a simple dummy character and gave it a basic hit animation where it sways back and forth. Then I gave the player a pretty terrible looking swing animation and added some components to handle the hit detection. Currently I'm using a collider which is attached to the weapon, but it's pretty unpleasant because it fails to register hits pretty frequently. I think I'll switch to spawning a collider in front of the player when damage should happen, It'll be less accurate, but the reduced accuracy will benefit the player and should make combat more pleasant. I also created a ranged attack system and a rudimentary lock-on system. This game is being made by feel. I haven't planned exactly how anything is going to work, so right now I'm experimenting to see what direction the combat should go that would make it engaging and fun. Unfortunately, some irritating problems I've been ignoring finally made me snap, so I switched gears. One of the problems I fixed this week was the renderer. This engine uses deferred rendering because it was the best option for the game I was making when I wrote it. However, this game is different. You see how the dummy is sliding into the ground? Well, it's not. The ground is actually raised in one of the realities. I want the dummy to fade out during this transition. But it's impossible for deferred rendering to do transparency. Let's take a look at why real quick. Deferred rendering begins by drawing all geometry in our scene and forwarding it to a few different frame buffers. Color, normals, and we keep the depth map. Next we need to make the shadow maps. To do this we draw the scene again from the perspective of each light. The black portion at the top left is our directional light. The remaining white space is available for additional shadow casting lights, but we aren't using any in this example. Now we can just focus on these buffers. Using a few of these buffers, we can now render out all of the lighting information in a single pass for every single one of our lights. Once we have that, we combine it with our color buffer to create a shaded frame. And that's the basics of deferred rendering. Now the reason transparency is impossible is because we are essentially converting our 3D scene into a 2D texture. There is no behind or in front. There are many ways to add transparency on top of a deferred renderer, but they add a lot of complexity to the renderer. I want to support multiple graphics APIs, so keeping the complexity low is important. To that end, I decided to switch to forward rendering, which excels at transparency. So I added transparency to the rendering flags component and got to work stripping out all of the deferred stuff. For my first attempt I totally forgot about transparency sorting, which is what this flickering is, so I had to add that. So I used distance from the camera to sort every single object right before rendering. Then I struggled with blending modes for a little while. They've always confused me, even in Photoshop, I end up just screwing around with them until they start doing what I want because I just can't intuitively read them and know what's going to happen. After a while I did end up getting the right behavior and now transparency is fully functional for textures and objects. Now that the forward renderer is done, I need to update all of my lighting shaders. But before I can do that, there are some other nagging problems I still need to fix. It's time for a quick gym break. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Today is chess day. Mini game. There's an original hardware PlayStation 2 box somewhere in my junk. Can you find it?
The next change I made was flipping the forward vector from negative z to positive z. Having it be negative z never really made any sense, but there also wasn't any reason to change it. However, now that I'm coding gameplay, I've discovered there is a good reason to change it. By using positive z as forward, I'll be able to move objects in the forward direction by using addition, and backward by using subtraction. It'll make my code a lot easier to follow. The next thing I needed to fix was my asset compiler. I'm using Collada for my source assets because it has first party support on macOS. macOS generates thumbnails in Finder and lets me use Quick Look to preview scenes, including animation. It's really helpful. The format is also XML, so I can easily open it in a text editor to modify it. However, Collada suffers from complexity. There are many ways to store the exact same type of data. This means every single piece of software has to be very complex to handle each case. Blender has a long-standing bug in its Collada exporter that saves morph targets as regular geometry in a scene. Xcode and many other programs only load the assets that are in the scene. So this means Xcode will discard the morph targets and only keep the base mesh. To solve this problem, I decided to only use Collada files output from Xcode. I chose Xcode because I'm already using it and because the output data uses Y for the up axis. So I open every Collada file in Xcode and save them again before compiling them for the engine. I could fix this problem manually by replacing the geometry tag with a controller tag and adding the correct controller ID. Then Xcode would load and export the morph targets. I could even write a script to do it. But I decided to just upgrade the asset compiler to support Blender. To do this, I had to account for Blender's Z up axis, since my engine uses Y for the up axis. Level geometry needs to be physically transformed, while nodes just need to be rotated. The last thing I wanted to fix was my lighting. I've been having a lot of problems with directional lights and spotlights. I couldn't figure out why until I started reading the Collada documentation. Turns out, directional lights and spotlights in Collada always shine light down the negative Z axis, even if the up axis for the scene is Z. In Blender, Z is up, so directional lights are always shining downward. In my engine, I want directional lights to shine in the direction they are looking. To help with this problem, I created a debug mode for lights and added some models to represent their location. I'm hoping to be able to use Blender to model the entire level's lighting without needing to code anything, and that's what I'm currently working on. Anyway, that's it for this video. Stay motivated, kill your lips, and I'll see you next time.